Hi, we're here with Dr. Lana Staley. And, you know, today there's a lot of affairs that we're hearing about in the political arena, in the common arena. You know, men are doing it, but women are doing it now. Oh, yes. The number of women is almost the same percentage as, as men now. About 10 years ago, I wrote a series of books on infidelity, I guess more like 15, because when my first one came out called Triangles, I met Bill Clinton. He oh. should have read the book. <laughs> <laughs> because the book would have said, tell the truth. Really? They'll forgive you because the really? most devastating part is the lying. If you're the one not having the affair, you start to not trust your own judgment. How could I have not known? Right. And how dumb was I? So one of the things that really undermines the relationship, it's not the sex. People do not get divorced over the sex. They get divorced over the betrayal mm. and the lying and how long did it go on and how many people knew. So it's really the whole emotional piece that's the most devastating. And we're talking about, you know, estimates, if you look at cyber affairs, emotional affairs, sex affairs, and love affairs, you have multiple choice. And all of those can, have, can potentially end a relationship. But the fact is they don't usually. Because what you have in a marriage is something bigger than an affair. Affairs are easy. Every time I have clients that are saying, oh, I'm so in love with her and my wife's so boring or my husband's so boring, I want to leave and live happily ever after. I say, wait, this is the best relationship you're ever going to have with him or her. You get together, you have a good time, you make love, you don't have to talk about anything important. You don't even have to talk about world peace or what's for dinner. You just have fun together. Do you really think that's real life? Mm -hmm. Because the fact that people do get divorced marry their lover, 90-some percent fail. Really? Bad idea. Because what we have in a marriage, especially depending on the age, is bigger than those moments of thrill, which we all like. Sure. And that, uh, that high that comes, this phenolphylline high, that comes from new love. I mean, there's nothing like it. Like, well, maybe well, there is. I just haven't tried those drugs. <laughs> I guess I have, a, I have a real problem with the fact that well, we know a lot of people are cheating emotionally, cyber, te sexting, all these things are going on. How do you ever get over that? I don't know how you it. get over it. Well, first of all, you both have to want to. Mm -hmm. And the important thing is what do you want? If you're the not having the affair right. and he is, what do you want? I mean, if you've got three little children, well, yes. this is the first time he's ever done this, uh, he's really sorry, and he wants to make it up to you, you'd boot him out? Bad idea. Why now, is that a bad a, idea? That's affair he's had. Okay. I have to put up with it five times? No. <laughs> I mean, I'm just like, I mean, a one-time do do mistake is an entirely different thing. But is it really a one-time mistake or one that he's admitting to? True. Uh, because sometimes they, you know, sometimes they're off. Sometimes people lie, but it's usually not about one thing. So if somebody's lying about having affairs, it's not the only thing they're lying about. They're already numb. You know, he didn't mm -hmm. tell me the truth about this. He didn't tell me the right. truth about that. No, he's been with this other woman. He says it was a one-night stand. Right. Yeah, right. You find out by whatever means. What are you supposed to do at that point? Usually the person tells. What most people find out because their spouse tells them. Really? Yeah. Okay, but they can't live with it. Yeah, and that's usually because they've decided to end it. Oh. They have, it's, it's run its course for them, and they really don't want to do it anymore. And it may be that they mm. find that it's compulsive, like mm. our friend Wiener here. This, obviously, yes. this is more about a compulsion than it is about sex. Right. And, you know, he's addicted. Especially these high-powered men really do this because they like the rush. They like the attention. And, the, like and the rush. And, and, the, the, rush. and the danger. I mean, they oh. like the danger. I see. Okay. Now, so who, I mean, it seems to me pretty obvious you're going to get caught, but I don't think they're thinking that much with that brain. But he's yeah. a little different case than most of our husbands. He I mean, is. You're he right. Is. Right. Because most of our spouses, 
They'll get in. Most affairs are with a coworker, or somebody they see throughout the day. Right. Mm -hmm. Correct. It's no longer necessary the, the secretary. It it may is more often a peer, somebody they work mm -hmm. with on a project that they develop a real closeness mm -hmm. with. Mm -hmm. um, I think we set boundaries on those relationships a little too far out now. So so let's back up on this because I think this is important. I have some strong feelings about this. So we, as the wife or the husband we have to have boundaries in our relationship that you're not out having cocktails with your associates all the time. Yeah, work stays at work. What are the boundaries? But, but wait a minute, before you set the boundaries, things are different now. People are traveling. You've got these travel oh, conventions. Yeah. Right. How do you, well, you know, what different. We had traveling back when I was in corporate America 20 years ago. We were traveling and I had lots of opportunities. Lots of opportunities. And that's what it's about. Yes. I mean, People ask me, well, what determines who does and who doesn't? Right. Opportunity. Mm -hmm. Isn't that what I've always said? <laughs> you were right. Given the opportunity. Yeah, but well, you didn't want to sleep with any of them. <laughs> no, well, I did. That. But, but given the opportunity, because it's like, well, who's going to know? Well, hey. and, and most men, if they was on some surveys, if they had absolutely no consequences, if they would never get They caught, would do it. Right. Yeah, yeah, I heard that. Would. Most of them. Mm -hmm. Most of them. Well, what about women? Would they do the same? Uh, it's a slightly lower percentage. It's about sixty percent. With men, it was about eighty some percent. Really? Eighty some is but percent would do it if they were going to get caught. Right. But still, that's more than half the women. And assuming, mm -hmm. and the women had more criteria. I wouldn't be caught. I wouldn't get any disease. And he's really good looking. And he's a good lover. Oh, <laughs> yeah, right. Where men are saying whatever. Uh, whatever. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> So Put the easy. sack on their face. Who cares? <laughs> well, how do you set boundaries when you're not with them? Well, you stay connected on the phone. You do. Uh, you call sure me when you get back to your room at 9.02. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. But the funny yeah. thing is, sure, he can call you and then hang up and then go off and do his thing. No, but I'm talking no. about staying connected. I'm talking yes, about I know having what you're a saying. conversation right. yes. for a half an hour. Yes. Right. Hour. Being engaged yes. as being to what he's doing feel really and being involved with But you with know what him. I do? I get the number of his room. You have to be protective of your marriage. And I think after eight, it's a date. I don't think business people. Thank you. That's exactly what I said. After, after eight p.m. You never said eight. It's a date. At night. At night. But you've yeah. never said eight. It's a date. No, it's that's a, a good saying. But, but it's a great saying because what I've said is if you're out with the opposite sex in the evening, having cocktails and dinner, not as a group. I'm talking about with one other person. You are asking for problems. Well, you are, and the, they may start out as a group, but then they may dwindle right. down. Right. So you what don't happens. even think they should be sitting around with a group. Well, you know, why do you need to be working at 8 o'clock at night? But what if they are having a meeting? Now, that's not fair, you guys. <laughs> Wait a minute. That isn't fair. At 8 o'clock at night. Well, so they're in cocktails. Wait a minute. No, you've been at this convention, <laughs> and it's, it's lapsed into dinner. And all of a sudden, you are sitting around, and some creative ideas come out. What? That, what's? This isn't right. You're making all of these uh, evening events be wrong. There's the, there's a difference between the exceptional meeting where there really is yes. a meeting about a specific topic right. that they're running into the evening. And that's, that's what I'm not, talking about. That's, that's the exception. Once a Thank year, you. or once a year, once every two years. This is not an everyday occurrence or an every week occurrence. So we have to be nice, we have to be sweet, we have to be engaged as to what yes. they're, how did your day go, dear? And that's what I mean by protecting your relationship, mm -hmm. that we need to be intentional and we can't just have this emotional outlet every time because, you know, they're our best friend and we're supposed to be able to show our feelings. I just don't believe that. Mm -hmm. I don't believe that you can just empty out all of your emotions and frustrations in front of a guy and say, well, isn't that sexy and aren't we close? Because no, it's not sexy and they don't like it. So what do you do? Call your girlfriend? Yes, uh -huh. call your girlfriend. So you really? don't just throw because all that what he's done to you. And she will both think you're right. Oh, absolutely. Or not. Mm -hmm. But well, she will validate us. Yeah, she'll validate. Well, I right. see how you feel, but you know, maybe you were a little... Maybe you're overreacting. Reacting. Right, right. But when we get back to the affair subject, you know, it is a threat, and it, people do get over it. And in mm -hmm. fact, when, when men have the affair, women try harder. To You're right. Of course they do. They're going to fall all over themselves. And really, to, what's, wrong, what's right. been wrong with this? What is it you right. haven't been getting? How right. can I be better? Right. You're right. But when it's the other way around, men leave. It's true. Why do men leave? 
I thought they wanted to make a puppy. <laughs> <laughs> so they leave it. They they isn't, so isn't it such a deep oh. hurt that they put everything into this relationship, and and the woman could do this? Well, it's such a again, deep it's fear. Hurt. And remember, when men get frightened, it's fight, flight, oh. freeze, or surrender. So they leave. When Say that again. Fight, fight, flight, freeze, or surrender. Okay. Freeze. Freeze. freeze, I can see freeze. So they do but that. freeze is not okay because no. freeze means okay, I'm here, but I'm you're not, not here. here, right? You're not, not emotionally here, here. No, no. right? Which and destroys the relationship. And because right. the female brain has more inner neural connections and is more adaptive, women come up with other solutions. Men just don't see all those options. It's just not the way the male brain works. They just don't.